Please sit down. We take our time to worship him like this because, you see, hallelujah. Do you know, in an average church service, please listen, in an average church service, many things happen to people that they never are aware of. Impartations, healings. Your assignment as a ministry is to make the atmosphere conducive that's your job you have no power to change any man listen the assignment is to make the atmosphere conducive for the healing presence of jesus for deliverances to happen you see that when the atmosphere is set any utterance that comes from that glory will produce results it becomes easy for deliverance to happen don't we are organized people but you see we must be careful so that we do not bring tradition and box the potentials of the Holy Spirit when we come before him it is because we are aware of our inadequacy so he becomes the Lord of the service there is a system of coordination of course but he must be allowed to reign supreme this is the secret let me tell you this is why many people never experience the power of god in church because we don't allow him we come as men of god and want to interrupt him the ushers come to interrupt him the worship team comes to interrupt him but if we can align with him the reason why you are coming is first before you love because you love god second because you are coming to grow thirdly you expect his power to touch an area of your life is that true yes so is 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 time wasted if you come and commit whatever number of hours you spend here and you cannot leave back with an evidence many of you here this is your first experience think how terrible it will be that you left wherever some of you are pastors that came to refire your spirit and get an impartation some of you are leaders in various places how could you come and just watch a man talk for a few hours and share the grace and go it's not only sin it's wickedness it's not only sin against god it is wickedness hallelujah our job is to make sure you experience god in his entirety the program was so designed that every face tackles an aspect of your life and that by the time we are sharing the grace what escaped praise and worship will not escape the fire of prayer what escaped the fire of prayer will not escape revelation you see that so the programs are designed we are not religious people trying to advance a man's ministry god is bigger than that this is serious business of changing people's lives are we together we are excellent people but we are not stupid people when it comes to transformation i'm not um, you can dress well and look well but the moment it comes to the destinies of men we must be serious we must take it seriously because we are stewards by grace and we must be accountable unto god hallelujah praise the lord i'm going to speak briefly um but I, I want to pray i just want to pray as i was sitting i sensed in my spirit that there were people who needed um a touch of the holy spirit and and for various reasons these things happen this touch can bring deliverance this touch can bring direction when the holy spirit touches you um there are many reasons why he touches you sometimes even you who is imparted you may not know why but for many people that is the answer to your prayer the anointing comes as the answer to your prayer it is not faith that answers your prayer faith connects you to the anointing it is the anointing that does the job your faith is your conviction faith does not bring result on its own the job of faith is to connect you to the power of god it is the power of god that supplies the possibilities 
hallelujah so you shouldn't be here having sicknesses having burdens and then we're just preaching and then it's not it's not working in your life so i want to pray for you hallelujah there are families that are represented that deserve the touch of god and um i know that he will bless us he will lift us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah just two things the lord is imparting the spirit of wisdom this is this is what this is what the lord is speaking to me and this is not everyone but that anointing there is a grace there is an unction that is going to come on several people is an unction strange grace for wisdom grace for wisdom supernatural grace for wisdom all the overflows whether one two three doesn't matter where you are um, it, it, there are exact impartations that are coming on people right now let me just do that job by the spirit i stretch my hands by the spirit and i command it so now i declare i send an anointing upon the word let the performance of the word be accomplished everywhere inside overflow one overflow two overflow three i command it so in the name of jesus wisdom this is what many of us need in this season is coming upon you that grace that grace wisdom to surmount mountains mountains everywhere there are people following online that grace the angel of his presence is bringing upon your life the hand of god is resting upon you wisdom the spirit of wisdom receive it i know that we're all getting it but there are specific people that this is for you will not escape it once it's for you the word of the lord will look for you will look for you no matter where you are for as long as you are within this vicinity the word of the lord will search for you and that impartation will happen in your spirit in the name of jesus i speak it i command it i decree it as an ordinance in the spirit everyone who must carry this level of grace wisdom wisdom that will bring an end to mountains that stand before you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the second thing that i see the lord imparting is the healing anointing now this doesn't happen all the time but i'm seeing it happen healing anointing the lord wants to bring a new level of the healing anointing in the name of jesus christ there are people that must carry that anointing the lord is saying i have been waiting upon you there are people whose bodies need the touch of the spirit not just you being healed the healing anointing that grace you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in visions in prayer meetings god has told you but in the name of jesus i activate that dimension in the name of jesus take that anointing take that anointing the healing grace the healing power of jesus the healing power there are some of you who are visitors this is your first time coming but the lord brought you because you need an encounter with that unction in the name of jesus receive receive of that grace let there be a transference of that grace That dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Take it half. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign.
Opportunities, restoration of anointings, graces, graces, connections in the name of Jesus. I'm hearing it in the spirit. Restoration. Restoration. God is creating scenarios in people's lives, recreating it again, recreating it again by the Spirit of God. Restoration, restoration, restoration. Make sure you believe it. Restoration, restoration, financial restoration, spiritual restoration, restoration in career, opportunities, relationships. Listen, there are people here, the dimensions of God you used to experience. Something happened and it looked like that portal just closed. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. Let there be a reopening of those doors. The gate that was open in the spirit that gave you access to that dimension. Let it be reopened. Regardless of the reason why it was closed, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be open.
Holy Spirit is really what many people are looking for. They don't know it is Him. So they are looking for many other things. But what people are really, really looking for is the Holy Spirit. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the access that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the wisdom that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the power that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the influence. If we will spend half the time we waste around committing to his presence, the pursuit, not looking for rema, not looking for power, not, not all of these things, focusing, staying with him. There are many prayer warriors that will never find his presence because we have turned it into idolatry. There are many fasting giants that may never find him because they are just motions. There are many Bible study giants that may never find him because we shroud ourselves in activities. The power is not in the activities. It's in the sincerity of your heart, your pursuit. It's not in the activities. It says, and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Please sit down if you can. A lot is already happening now. Just allow those under the anointing. This is koinonia. I'd like you to be sensitive tonight as I teach we have begun the year expect impartations impartations mean that God is doing something impartation means that there is a transference you see that there is a transference of possibility and whether you are in any of the overflows let me tell you truthfully speaking the only advantage that those inside have over those outside is just the convenience that that's it spiritually speaking those things don't make any there's no difference at all doesn't matter what nation doesn't matter where it's just our psychology to think we are nearer to the man of god god can speak to someone in overflow three smuggling himself somewhere near the wall nobody knows and then god just visits him like that this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah <laughs> I want to teach you something tonight that I really believe with all my heart will grant you access to not only have intimacy with God, but it will grant you access to walk in the reality of signs and wonders. I will continue to teach these things. It's my assignment to guide us, to help us become spiritual people. You don't become a spiritual man by frowning your face. You don't become a spiritual man by being a talkative. You don't become a spiritual man by show of religion. It is a dimension in the spirit you climb to. When you are there, everything around you knows you are there. It's an exact location. There is no guess about it. Hallelujah. When God gives a word, by now you already know that every time prophecy comes, there is always a commitment there is always a commitment hallelujah in overflow one there are two people the power of god is coming on please bring them inside i want to prophesy to them you are here working miracles i worship you I worship you. You are here, wiping every tear. I worship you. 
the word for those people the lord says even the lawful captive shall be delivered even the lawful captive i break the siege of witchcraft there is strange operation of witchcraft i command the siege of witchcraft to be broken in the name of jesus even the lawful captives shall be delivered i will contend with them that contend with you I will contend with them that contend with you even the lawful captives the siege over your families the siege is broken right now the siege is broken I decree it and I declare it by the authority of the kingdom the siege is broken the siege is broken the lord says i should continue prophesying it that the siege is broken is broken i use this as a point of contact to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice if there is anything sitting on anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands and i command in the name of jesus that every chain that holds the destiny of anyone here I command that that chain is broken right now in the name of Jesus over your life and over your family I declare that it's broken in the name of Jesus please sit down sit down just allow me to do my mad thing here for a few minutes we'll get back to the word the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting, O grave? Where is thy victory? I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. Why am I prophesying this? I shut the mouth of the grave. 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 Zekoto sheke teke teke nekata. I shut the mouth of the grave in the name of Jesus over every family I shut the mouth of the grave I shut the mouth of the grave I shut the mouth of the grave listen let me tell you hold on that's not what I'm teaching but you see this grave is a spirit there are people there that can call people who are alive to come and join them I have a series there and I will teach you death hell and the grave I will teach the, we have a lot this year but you see this grave you see is not a pit there are people it was it not a conversation that was happening Lazarus and they said please let somebody go there that means someone that is out that's why I say oh grave where is your victory that the grave can choose a person and say bring him to join us I say it again the mouth of the grave the mouth of the grave is shot over every family shot over every individual hallelujah listen don't mind the physical actors that act it can be accident it can be anything it's a lie there is a call the grave as a living thing can pick somebody and say let him come and join us 
I've seen the spirit of death. You know that. So for me, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a mystery at all. Hallelujah. Do you know, I once saw a vision of someone, a real vision. I saw the person already buried, but in the physical, he was walking happy and ha he didn't reach three months. That person died. In the realm of the spirit, he is already done with. The person is alive, having plans. Whereas the grave has called him. Pray in one minute and shut the mouth of the grave. Pray, don't be afraid. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I curse you by the God of heaven. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh great, where is thy victory? Pray, pray. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh great, where is thy victory? Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Let me talk to that woman. You see this woman? Leave her. She knows why she's coming. Come. I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a woman that has already died. It's over with her. This woman I'm seeing. She has been seeing it. Dead men calling her. Calling her in the night. Some of you have seen it. People who have died. That's the grave calling you. Pray again and say I reject that call. I reject that call. I reject that call. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted. Not time wasted. Only God knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the Holy Spirit don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness let me teach you something a am I boring you am I wasting your time next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you don't get up and just jot it down whether it is raining or not if you have to cancel your job for that day is it not when you are alive you go for work if you get up and see dead people where I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, it's gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is dead calling you, calling your children. Sit down, allow the devil come and destroy you. 
that's what happens to people they don't do anything about it and you see and because they don't act one day you find out that you just get up whereas it was concluded remember the book of job they were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily and in one day everything happened that an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning this realm is not the only realm where people function there are powers that operate they can go out of this realm and call people jesus knew that principle that's why he stood and called lazarus back this is how to be spiritual not just for yourself to help other people now with this knowledge god can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it you don't sit down and it happens and say hey i saw it oh you stop it this grave you see read what solomon said about it in the book of proverbs it can never say enough this grave it keeps opening hell and enlarge itself opens receive people finds young people just when people are at the prime of their life that devil comes from wherever don't ever make death look like a mystery it is as predictable a spirit as sickness innocent people plan their lives i don't know why i started talking about this plan their lives and do all. do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life he can't make you leave god he can't make you this the next plot is to kill you whether or not you die in christ or not at least you are dissociated from your body it's still a plus for him make sure you insist that you are here for a long time there is work to be done give birth to children and before the children are still young you die and leave them and leave them in the hands of wicked people it's not to make you afraid it's to let you know that death can it has it attempts death is boastful he said oh death where is your victory it's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when we say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold. And that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much. For those of you who are coming for the first time, this is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. First John. We are looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the, the parameters for measuring spirituality like I've taught us is first our conformity to the image of the Christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there is a dimension of it that I want to introduce to us tonight. And is a dimension where Christ is seated at the heart of every individual and I'm not just talking of born again born again is a decision is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ but there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart that place is the place of power 
that place is the place of authority that is the place where satan death hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you there is a realm of immunity i'm trusting god that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom but we become the distributors of this reality is that true first john chapter 2 and verse 15 a popular scripture here i want us to examine it just listen to me carefully first john chapter 2 thank you jesus first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 verse 15 the holy spirit is speaking to me again and i will bring laughter to her family and i will bring laughter to her family i will bring laughter you will hear again the sound of laughter the sound of melody you will hear the sound of laughter you will hear the sound of laughter that's what the spirit of the lord is saying you will hear the sound of laughter you will hear the sound of laughter love not the world neither the things that are in the world please follow me carefully if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the lost thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey into what we call carnality carnality is not um it's not necessarily a bad word it's just a description of a state please listen carefully when we say a man is carnal it's not supposed to be an insult are we together the bible says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so the bible gives us the progression of carnality carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one love not the world the word world there is the world system the governing system the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um, it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen it says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and prune your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things 
are we together now so the bible says love not the world it's a warning it's a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system their their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means it gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three it says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like nebuchadnezzar haven't built babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to lucifer i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be um please come david Dam. let's let's not make a fool of ourselves here there is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands there are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself a track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens you don't just speak and then god it looks like god owes your word attention no sir no sir for i am a man under authority 
and the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty and on the strength of my submission i say to one go and he goes i say to another come is not my eloquence it is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority are we together now so he says love not the world brothers and sisters let me tell you thank you they've done this is the problem that jesus came to solve you see if you have an encounter with jesus listen he's not going to ask you whether you believe in the old or new testament that that is nonsense jesus is not going to ask you all those things jesus is not going to ask you and say which part of the ten commandments did you keep or which law the or the, no 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 he's going to ask you one question just one question his emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart it's called christ self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without christ being at the center of your heart but that becomes your undoing because they will destroy you and wreck your life brothers and sisters i don't care how many hours you pray i don't care how many bible study concordances you have i don't care how many services you have per week if you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has true sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no side won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system is god helping us when your life becomes christ-centered your life will speak particular languages number one thy will be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives number two that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal jesus 
the revelation of Jesus becomes the obsession of your life not the revelation of your prestige not the revelation of your educational prowess not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things the revelation of Jesus in and through your life this is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center number three that any and all that you do becomes for his glory the Lord's prayer for thine is the kingdom the power and glory thine is the kingdom I receive all of the blessings but yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory the Bible says and they glorified God in me do you know listen do you know the reason why the more I by the grace of God keep learning about God I am seeing why it is hard come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last Friday can God trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what God gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say Lord lift me up take me high and God says no way stop praying and saying oh God ask Lord what is it in me that is the resistance what is in anointing that God cannot give you what is in prosperity that God cannot give you Mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but God is not a fool just because he said I will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good are we together now yes do you know the foundation for jealousy listen the foundation for envy backbiting and all of these things is one word self 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 it is because I want to give a perception that I am a big man so if somebody calls me Joshua Selman I now say where is the apostle you didn't add it you see that my ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and I react so I say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say I'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are it's like an, an action film people acting out the level of flesh and self and Carnality. Sometimes we call it spirituality, but it's really carnality. Really carnality. Love not the world. Brothers and sisters, I show you a secret to rest. This is where high blood pressure comes from. Hello? Hello? This is where high blood pressure, ask the doctors, they will tell you. Self-inflicted worrying. My ego is on the line. See? Right? My ego is on the line. If this thing is not done, I prophesy to David Dam. If that word does not come to pass, they will now think I'm not an accurate man of God. So my ego is on the line. I'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because I want to see his life change. I am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change. That's the problem the scribes and the Pharisees had. It was not healing. They would not have a problem if it happened through their hands. But the fact that it didn't happen through their hands, they just found an excuse and said, Madam, don't get healing on Sunday. And Jesus said, what are you saying? If your donkey falls inside a well on Sunday, will you leave it there and say, I will come back on Monday? 
you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites Jesus told them do you know if I can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of Christ I have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch Satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and Abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers Satan in our lives you know I've taught this year in this house comes when Satan comes Satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and he says, no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment i hope you like what i'm, pre I'm preaching this is a deliverance message yes it is yes it is yes it is i watch do you know brothers and sisters kai whatever god did to me may he do it to you truly speaking i say it with all humility my life is a free life i am i will be i will be lying if i tell you it was all my effort i think there is something about the sovereign power of god maybe it's an election of grace he did it but the moment hold my hands david Dam. another person come emeka come these are the luggages we carry one other person the ladies i don't know how you are going to hold me find a way of holding come 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 we're acting something here. Hold anybody. Come and hold my hand here. Come. Can they hold you? She's afraid of holding me. She wants to hold David down. Now watch this. This is a prayer warrior. I'm showing you your spirit man. You are a prayer warrior. You are a fasting giant. You are a word addict. But you are carrying. These are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him. That we are refusing. How old are you? I'm 30. You mean it? I thought you were 42. This is the Lord. Because a broken, a broken uh, what, spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face. So this guy is carrying all this load. Do you think Satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting? Do you know how Satan ties them? He doesn't use a rope. He uses your heart. That's what is there. 
this is how to be spiritual you come to a point where you say lord i love you but these things are occupying my heart and lord i'm not irresponsible but then you have to become lord of my life genuinely i am too attached i can't sleep i sleep for one hour per day because i'm thinking about money a man can have nothing except it is given and you let go the issue of the job the devil will now deceive you and say you better be responsible if you don't think about it it won't come and he said no jesus i hand it over to you hallelujah this is the way of the cross you are getting free you too you are strange because you are now feeling lighter ah now all of a sudden you could pray before you go to pray after five minutes you stop praying on your own and you are thinking but now you could stretch for one hour two hours you are becoming lighter and then all of a sudden this one is a lady hallelujah are we together this is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman you can mean anybody it doesn't have to be lady or a, a, whatever lord jesus I must make it happen my way and god is saying you will wear yourself to death lord age is not on my side is it that you are not seeing and god is saying i am lord of all if i don't give you anything it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and he said lord i've been looking at this lady's picture i can't even pray and god says I will, if you think i'm going to talk to you about that lady you are joking you better talk to me leave this lady and say god i want to but this lady she has become an idol maybe the lady yes it's true that's the name it's called idolatry let's call it what it is she has become an idol not because she's bad are you getting what i'm saying now but because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with god so god is going to say lay it down lay it down does not mean leave her lay it down means be willing to leave her hi and you say oh god no now how can i leave this guy this is my 11th relationship and while you are talking all that nonsense god doesn't say anything he allows you then you now cry cry one night lie down roll and let it go your spiritual life you notice that the moment you surrender something lives in you the more you die you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down you see that love not the world love not the world this one is ministry no i must shine my colleagues started ministry before me and i mean i must do ministry this, this is a lot of especially some of us that have the grace of god upon our lives no i must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is and god says look calm down for three months you are not holding any meeting said, god my whole reputation was on this small fellowship now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again god said that's exactly what i was trying to show you it was never about the prayer meeting it was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition so lay it down you lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes never will it resume because you are you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather you say okay ladies and gentlemen i just came back from the throne room. god said you won't use me like that is god speaking to us by the time you lay these things down let me show you the moment you focus on christ all of you come closer i'm focusing on christ look at what is happening physically are you seeing this my focus is on him and i turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all these all these these things we do are proofs of carnality i was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we are saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to 
the heavens, Jesus be the center. never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and God says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir Oh, I'm so blessed hearing this message myself. Are we together? I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you. I'm trusting you to get married. And Lord says, all right, I will direct you. Say, no, Lord, this is, this is the lady. This is the guy I must marry. If you are the one, it must be this. And God says, that's not the way it works. Thy will be done. It is for your glory. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. I give you all the praise. That's a spiritual man. Lord, this is the business I want to do. I thank you. I have passion for it. But Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Hmm. That's the language of spiritual people. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say, please don't be angry. Pastor Femi, come next Sunday. No. Please, if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache, please come to the fountain where great men can rest. There is a Sabbath where he takes over your life, your ministry, and all that concerns you. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. Born this into your spirit. You cannot have Naira and Kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you. You cannot have any idea until he gives to you. You can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle. That's why we don't give. You count offering and count five Naira. You add puff puff one thousand. Took another drink. 1,000 or wine. Are we together now? And then you come before God and squeeze 10 naira. And you are smiling now. All shall wait and God is looking at your heart. Look what Jesus did in the church. He came and stood and saw what people were giving. It was a reflection of their attachment. It wasn't the money. He saw a woman who had all. Do you know why Jesus was touched? Because she really didn't know who he was. If she had known him, it would be hypocrisy because he was there. She just came. That means she was doing it unsupervised. It was what she would do. Whoever this God is of the Hebrews, I love him. And I lay down everything. Love not the world. This is the problem of many people's destinies. Attachment. Attachment to money. God gave you a car. All of a sudden, you carried that car and put it in your heart. The garage is not enough for it. How can you have a garage for a car and not and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with God inside the toilet. You, you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's when you say, Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. You provide a cupboard where you keep your documents, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? He's not in your heart. He's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah, 
you would have built but you've shed so much blood however it was good that it was in your heart or you have gathered the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted Luke chapter 15 let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son Luke chapter 15 please give us verse 11 I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing the story of the prodigal son for many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother all of them did different versions of the same thing follow me verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons how many sons two sons next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that's selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selma was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the god of heaven that touched the person that's self are you seeing that now yes the younger son had everything but every time he saw his father he had to wait on his father daddy i want something and the father was okay just a few minutes i said no no i want something so that i will it will be in my name and said daddy i'm tired of depending on you ah, that's what christians do lord i'm tired of waiting on you for this power give me this thing so that i can do it anyhow i want on stage why must i wait for you and worship before you come don't you know that is falling my hand after clapping for me and giving me water i come and stand on the stage and i say lord you have to come whereas people on my is my t-shirt they are wearing with my face not your face so lord give me this power so that i can operate it independent of you prodigal son he didn't want it he wanted it in his name meaning his control the father said all right everyone that asked receive it now watch this he says and not many days after the younger son gathered all together he took on his journey are you seeing he did not want submission uh -uh. a self-centered life wants to be the lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 
and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see it there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry scene two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what if, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was he not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he want he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher so there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away 
there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone tonight is a call you want to experience power you want to experience miracles you must come to a point in your life brothers and sisters you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say what a beautiful car and turn and say Lord truly if you make demand of this I will give you and you are not just doing church language it's from your heart yes it's from your heart that way when God gives you the gift of a wife you will not beat her and say I must beat you that's how we are in our family when we are angry we beat we ask for forgiveness later on that attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him when God gives you children you will not allow them to become lawless and say no it's westernization because you will know that everything God gives you he demands that you act as though it's his own God never gives us ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom we are stewards of everything his resources mysteries whatever it is it belongs to him it only passes through me so brother you want to become a multi-millionaire do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit please don't let me have it for everything i need is in you if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit don't let me have question does your wardrobe belong to him does your bank account belong to him does your anointing know you fasted for it to come but does it belong to him now does your wife belong to him does your husband belong to him does whoever you are in a relationship with does it belong to him do your children belong to you or they are his property you are only a steward over them does your business belong to you? Does your church, does Koinonia belong to him or is Joshua Selman's property? Is his um, ladder of greatness? Ah, far be it from me. Too young for that kind of stress. Don't let me have it. Let everything I have be from you. Please don't let me have it For everything I need is in you Listen, this is the level Where you will see dimensions of power Beyond your wildest imagination Someone will sit down on your bed And stand up And all of a sudden The fibroid is gone It was so unconscious There is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me I thank God for the things that God does but I am so sometimes I just look and I say Lord Kai someone was going to bless me a few days ago and it was quite a very large amount and the person just said oh please send me your account number and i just as i was ending the call the spirit of god was speaking to me about a family that that money was for you know why god can speak to me like that because my life the account and the favor is his own 
I was so happy when he said it. Not just as a law for abundance. It's with all pleasure. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. You're my one desire. That you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside, <laughs> there is a realm of rest. A man can enter the rest of God. It's not irresponsibility. Everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles. He's the opener of the door. He's the lifter of men. You have separated your ego from these things. If it happens well for you, glory be to God. If it does not happen well to you, Lord be praised. If the child comes, Lord, I thank you for the testimony. If the child does not come, Lord, while I wait, I still love you. That's one who is Christ-centered. Listen, that's a spiritual man. That's a spiritual man. God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self flesh the lady must be this beautiful figure eight the guy must be this a millionaire must be this and people keep jump packing rubbish and trouble into their lives how about people who don't even gone at the days this issue of hearing god people have eroded it you just get up and say i want to go to abel kuta because there's green pastures there how about brothers and sisters let's respect and fear god There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I'm not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have. For everything I need is in you. Listen, we're about to pray. Think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning. Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry, trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are em I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say, life. What a terrible life. How can this ministry grow? How can this ministry grow? Oh Lord, do this. this. How can this ministry grow? And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the issue of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness. And let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying. 
but there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know, especially things, things, I can't be that stupid. No. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They will take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? He says, seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop was the only one that had was it no it wasn't a laptop it was a computer he was the only one who had a computer at that time and we we're trying to raise money for the crusade and that's how this guy i think he was he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there suleiman computer for sale i was so touched i don't know how many of them he has now he will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory that's what happens when your heart stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over find out what they did for god to trust them this much don't say you are lucky it's because your father is this my father is a lie god supervises our heart i've taught it here in koinonia but let me say it when god is closing a door over somebody don't open it don't open it out of sympathy there are people that have wanted to help with all my heart and god has stopped me again and again there is a dealing god is rotting in their life don't interrupt the dealing of god are we together there are pastors for many years they love god but their church will not grow they are serving god and sometimes you can pity them and say look just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says, you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark. And you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. Our hearts must be given to him. Ladies, please look at me. Sisters, let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things clothes shoe they are wonderful god will give you more than your wildest imagination brothers let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show i am rich so that all and sundry will respect you is all nonsense if you are great you are great honor is a mantle if you don't have it you don't have it. it's as simple as that Tonight is a night of thorough repentance. We are going to cry before God and confess the idolatry, the sin, the carnality of idolatry to say, Lord, I've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me. I hand it over. There is peace in handing over your life to God. There is peace in handing over your children to God. There is peace in handing over your job. Hand over the difficult boss. Don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50-50, agreed and you are in trouble. No. Allow God who will do it 100-0. He will give you. Bless you. We commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. so much of my testimonies 
because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching. We came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting, I was counseling people and I came out to just, you know, see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that, sir, I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you. And then I'm looking and saying, my God, what is all this? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, just talk to this, please talk to the protocol people and let the church, whatever they want to do with it there. And I came back and I think day before yesterday or so, it's still called the protocol. The church has said, somebody has given a person a car. How do we convey it and bring it there? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we in now? February. Car, it must come. And God is saying, Abba, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something. Open to the book of Matthew. Say, Matthew chapter what? God, I've been crying. I've been saying, can God is saying, look, look how you are making a mess of yourself. When you love God and fear God, please hear me. He would take the prayer request of somebody. It's not because I'm a man of God. Go and ask him what I'm doing. Don't just say you are lucky. There's no luck in this thing. You work it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire. Have your way. Have your way. We are fighting too many battles in our lives. These battles are not even there. They were created by our lust. Sister, let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you, I will serve your house, and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze. There's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around. What of brothers? I must do this. If I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be not be six forever because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it high for me don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart. Some of you, as you are singing it, God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You 
have my everything take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me lord you have my everything say take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me Use all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Take my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything to say. All of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Father, take away the idol that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the lord builds a house they labor in vain except the lord builds a house they labor in vain except the lord builds a house they labor in vain Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. remove everything every lust that I'm so attached to every lust that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ centered life a life where everything about you aside from God nothing is a do or die affair Christ Lord enthrone hallelujah prayer point number two mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the lordship of jesus mention it whatever god has done and given you mention it by name and bring it under the lordship of jesus the marriage you gave me i bring it under the lordship of jesus the children you have given me they are taught of the lord and great is their peace I rededicate them a handover ceremony the job you gave me I hand it over to you the relationship you gave me I hand it over to you if you brought it you are the one who can maintain it the burden is killing me pray the burden is destroying me Lord you are the one who gave me the prayer group the church the business I'm tired of struggling by my strength bring me rest bring me rest 
the rest that only you can bring your life like a charm favor open doors i tell you the bible says behold i and the children whom who gave you who gave you is god that gives increase i and the children the lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in zaria in nigeria in israel but where do the signs and wonders come from from the lord of hosts I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare. Pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders for signs financial signs and wonders supernatural signs and wonders dimensions of revelations dimensions of encounters dimensions of increase dimensions of influence dimensions of prayer grace access to the mysteries of the kingdom spiritual men kingdom minded people Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you 
that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. Except you reveal to us, O oh God, we cannot know. Except you show us, we cannot see. Except you guide us, we will not be accurate. Hallelujah. I'll share some more on Monday, but this word you see is the secret that make men great. Every man is built by the word of god not just the word of god that is read but the word of god that is revealed by the wisdom of the spirit and received and tonight i i just want to talk along these lines and we'll just run through a few scriptures as i challenge you i i truly hope that someone will be angry with your current situation whether spiritually or whatever dimension and trust that tonight's teaching will help build you let's start with john chapter 8 john chapter 8 and verse 32 john chapter 8 and verse 32 in fact let's start from verse 30 we'll read from 30 to 32 30 to 32 it says as he spoke these words this is jesus now many believed on him 31 then said jesus to those jews which believed on him he said if you do what continue in my word then ye are my disciples indeed and then 32 says and ye shall know the truth you will know the truth by starting as you continue somewhere along the lines of your consistency you will encounter something remember the context is continuation not just starting to read not just a five minutes devotional not just a one month study it says if you continue in my word you are activating something that will cause you to eventually encounter the truth it says and if it is truth there is a character of truth it sets free meaning that if you claim to know the word and it still leaves you in bondage or in that situation then the truth of that word the final the uh, how, how do i how do i describe it now when the word of god is broken down the unit of it is truth the capacity to be set free from 
life's vicissitudes the capacity to not be under the limitations of life to rise by understanding and by the liberating power of truth he says if you continue meaning it would take a while he didn't lie to you he said if ye continue then you are my disciples then he says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free ladies and gentlemen there are many people around the world with scriptures with books with tapes with teachings attending seminars and all of them will tell you they have the word all of them will tell you they have the truth but we do not see that liberating power of the truth in their lives not their spiritual lives not their finances not their ministries they remain in bondage in spite of their supposed encounter with the word something is wrong if it is truth that you meet the bible says the truth shall make you make you like i say make food for me the food is not there you are going to enter a kitchen and make it happen the bible says the truth if encountered can make what does not exist in your life it it never said the truth will bring you freedom there is no freedom anywhere like like if i tell you make jollof rice for me as at the time i was speaking there's no jollof rice you will search it and not find it but i said make it are we together your intelligence can gather from any market and any location the cow the vegetables and then combine them in a way that after a few hours there you have plate what you are looking for is freedom but it's not available and then the bible says when you encounter the truth the truth knows what forces to bring together and then all of a sudden something that did not exist will now exist the truth shall make you free free from what free from poverty free from fear free from mediocrity are we together now so the problem usually is that we may have encountered the word but we have not encountered the truth let's talk about it in john chapter 18 please give us verse 33 and we're reading to verse 38 something happened between pilate and jesus please listen and learn the bible says pilate entered into the judgment hall again jesus is being judged now and called jesus and said unto him art thou the king of the jews pilate was asking a question next verse we're reading to 38 jesus answered him sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it of thee that means pilate had an information people were murmuring it outside and he came in he said are you a king looking like this the king of the jews and then the next verse pilate answered am i a jew thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me what hast thou done 36 jesus answered listen my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight that i should not be delivered to the jews but now is my kingdom not from hence 37 he said pilate therefore said unto him art thou a king remember this is a battle of reality and information he's trying to verify something follow me closely thou sayest that i am a king to this end was i born for this cause came i into the world that i should bear witness unto what talk to me please that i should be a testifier of the truth everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice so he's talking of truth now next verse pilate said unto him a question that people never ask what is truth notice the moment pilate said what is truth jesus said i am a testament of the truth immediately he said i find in him no fault in other words because you are the truth you qualify to be free if it is truth it always sets men free are you getting what i'm saying now so jesus pilate confessed that because you are a testifier of the truth there is no reason why you should be in this situation when truth shows up no matter what it is it must let you go jesus is remaining there 
was because of his love for us but Pilate said before all he said I find no fault in the truth that's the same way poverty can say I find no fault the truth has come I must give way this has come I must give way when the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture I said my goodness everywhere Jesus went that was a system of oppression it couldn't hold him for long because he was truth are we together they held him before a cliff he came out there was scarcity around the truth and the truth said no it shouldn't be and all of a sudden multiplication came because the truth was there are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everywhere the truth went the ministry of that truth was to liberate was to set free when he got into your house no matter what it was that truth made men free he went to the house of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm coming to your house. And within minutes, because Zacchaeus hosted the truth, he was free. And thou shalt know the truth. If you ever host the truth, then the truth must make you free. Mm. Very powerful revelation. That means if we remain in bondage, the issue is not just Satan. The issue is that we may have been receiving scripture and Bible study, but the truth has not come. Because when the truth comes, the Bible says it makes you free. It fabricates freedom from wherever and ministers it to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Many people keep bragging around with their acquisition of scriptures and their criming of scriptures and their participating in teachings. Listen carefully. The truth is not just a right information. There are many right informations that are not the truth. You have to understand this. You only say an information is correct based on a reference. Unfortunately, the reference itself can be wrong. Are we together now? There is something that science, science has pieced together a body of facts. And whoever aligns with that body of fact with respect to science is walking in the version of the truth. Is that true? But science itself must be vetted by someone higher than it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Culturally speaking, there, are, there is a system of understanding and behavior built by culture. And to the degree to which you align with it, we say you are walking in the truth. So there is a lot of relativity when it has to do with the subject of truth. What is permissible to a person and within a context may not be permissible to another person within another context. But here's what Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, not a truth the truth that means i am the ultimate system of freedom and liberation an encounter with the truth makes men free if you claim to have knowledge of the word of god if you claim to have found something you think is true and it does not produce the requisite freedom then it is not the truth it may be something else. It may be a well-meaning information that is correct based on a historical system of agreement. They have agreed that whoever does it this way. I give you an instance. In our world today, if a woman just looks at herself and says, I want to get pregnant without a man, that is not true as far as the educated opinion of men is concerned. Is that true? But when the truth was ready to find expression, there was a system that was created that would have been told a lie by science. Be careful 
what you call true and false there must be a reference because with respect to God there are some things that are agreed as true by men but then when it comes to God God says no way Lazarus died that was the truth based on what doctors like David and his colleagues would say they had checked him and there was no pulse it was over but when the truth came he said what did you say three days roll away the stone this is the truth if it is the truth he sets men free are we together they buried the truth and covered it in a grave after three days the grave opened and the truth came out if it is truth then it must set free the question is why are we still helplessly under so much bondage we pray we fast we sleep on our Bibles, we quote Bibles, we listen to tapes, yet it looks like our situation is not even scared of our spiritual investments. Could it be that we are not encountering the truth? Even before Pilate, the, proof, the truth prevailed. The moment Jesus said, look, leave the issue of king. I am truth. Pilate said, what is truth? And he said, this man is free. I may not understand what truth is, but I'm a victim of the effect of that truth. I must let you go. I must let you go. What if you knew the truth about your life and destiny? What if you knew the truth that you were not a victim of situations and circumstances? What if what they told you about your upbringing was a lie? It was culturally true, but from the reference of God is a lie. What if your past and what he told you were a lie with respect to God? A lie is not a wrong information. A lie is any information that was not brought from God. It's a lie. It doesn't matter how right it is. If it did not originate from God, then it's not true. Ah. Truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. 2 Timothy, when you read from verse 3 and verse, uh, chapter 3 and verse 7, the Bible talks about this group of people, zealous people like we are. It says that they are ever learning. Please look up. Ever learning, but never able. Learning does not guarantee an encounter with truth. That you are sitting with a Bible does not mean you are encountering truth. That you are sitting with a tape did you hear the testimony of the dear lady who was listening to the seven days um, prayer and fasting? She said she had been listening to it. Just because you started the tape, started and finished with your ear hearing it does not mean you can encounter the truth. She said at that point a prayer came and light opened and all of a sudden she received. And the results showed immediately. A friend that had no business helping her, that's the truth making a way now. The truth always makes a way. Don't leave no uncle nonsense. You don't need it. Once the truth comes, the truth will find a way around it. Because the truth is not just an information. The truth is also a person. So when the truth comes into the womb of a barren woman, what happens? The truth starts making a way. It finds out what is the issue first. And they say, ah, this woman has no womb. And the truth said, there is still a way. There is still a way. Prophesy to yourself and say, there is still a way. Look at the challenges that stand before you. That you cannot see a way does not mean there is no way. Just stop looking for a way. Let truth come. Truth knows where the way is. Ah! You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. With your power, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you made. Sit down, let me tell you. There is no uncle anywhere who is going to help you. There is no... A, an uncle only helps when the truth makes him part of the actors of your breakthrough. Nobody just comes because he knows you. Ye shall know the truth. 
many of us are trying to find ways and methods whereas the secret is to stay until the truth comes when the truth comes light must come let me show you something let me show you something that will bless you what's what's the what's the scripture now help me holy spirit um isaiah 29 isaiah 29 give us from verse 11 and 12 Isaiah 29 verse 11 and 12 let me show you that just because you have a book called the Bible in your hand does not mean you have access to truth read it with me he said and the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed it did one that is what learned saying read this I pray thee and he said I cannot not because I can't open it it is sealed sealed next verse <laughs> and the book is delivered to him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned both the educated and the uneducated stand helpless in the presence of this book where is the key how do men read it i thought by being learned i will automatically understand it it is not science the book is sealed there is a spirit with the key that opens it your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word i will forever sing your praise your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word listen listen this book you see has written in it the codes of your destiny but it is always sealed i told you everything glorious is what covered no glorious thing is revealed you don't buy a product without a package so your destiny is there but it is sealed going to school is very important but when it comes to the matters of the spirit my brother my sister don't let the pride of education make a fool of your destiny that's why we have many intellectuals who brag and say what is god a can become c and they are trying to make c out of a forever whereas the maker is truth a foolish man can come with his foolishness and sincerity and say lord i, I can't amount to much my life you see is a testament of this they are life to those who find them when you find it it looks like a charm it's impossible for life to keep you down this is not some bragging no if it is the truth if you ever see a mountain start laughing there must be a way there must be a way Pilate looked at Jesus and said if you are a witness of the truth then I find no fault I let you go Are you learning something tonight it's not just opening the bible and then reading oh james chapter this the bible said this in the name of jesus i will never be that's that's just that's that scripture you are just playing games many of us keep flattering ourselves for many years thinking i'm not saying reading your bible is not important i have found the missing key why many well-meaning believers don't get results they are not lazy they are more serious than even some of us pastors Take laziness out of the equation. Why is life hard for many people? What is the mystery of this hardship? Close heavens everywhere. No help, failure, pain. There is a, an explanation. The book that you have been reading is sealed. Hmm. That you got a message from me to preach does not mean it has been opened to you. No, sir. Have you ever opened a scripture and then you are reading, you've been reading it and all of a sudden you see something there that you never saw and then you can mark that day and say something shifted. That, that portion of scripture was open to you. I remember studying about the anointing for many years. I read books and books. A lot of people got their revelation from Good Morning Holy Spirit. You've never had me mention it because I didn't get anything from it. I read it 
good morning holy spirit i was blessed but i didn't see anything there and i just stayed if you continue that's the key and then one day the portals when it opens it is open when jesus stood for to read in the temple the bible says they brought to him the scroll of isaiah it was open and he said this day you have been reading it and thinking it's some prophet somewhere but i am the manifestation of this brothers and sisters let me tell you this if we don't get serious with our lives to find truth we are going to keep convincing ourselves and jumping around quoting scriptures that for a very long time our lives will not capture the levels of freedom that befits one who claims to have that knowledge of truth i know many wonderful lovely men and women of god struggling around in ministry sincere they won't steal nothing they won't do anything notice that both the learned and the unlearned are still victims of the same thing so what is the key i will show you <laughs> ah, i will show you ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1 to 5. Note this. You know, there are many people who keep talking word of God, word of God, word of God. I, I don't have a problem with it. It is true. But we are missing something very vital. Vital. The book by itself is sealed. You will only read a, you will read stories from it. For this cause, I, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Uh-huh. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. What is the grace? How that what? Uh-huh. He made. Stop. He made. I didn't learn it. How that by revelation, he made. Who is the he? Someone came to me and opened the book he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when ye read when ye read ye may understand my knowledge the basis of what you are reading is not just that i wrote someone came and opened something to me and i want to help you too because if all you do is to just read you will not find anything it says when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 which others which in other ages was not made known so this thing is made known it's not studied it's made known it's like occult it is made known if it has not been made known my brother my sister let me tell you you will fast and pray and never find it it is made known a man can receive nothing except it is given this is how we rest in the kingdom we keep struggling and thinking it's just by all of these things no your press and then he comes to make it known if god does not make it known you will never find it it is so obvious yet you will look and look and never find it it says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by who is the he talk to me who is the he so the he comes to you and says this book cannot open except i am there the book can give you the word but the spirit can show you the truth you need truth that's what you need you don't just need word like word like that when you say this many believers think you are encouraging people to not be serious about the word of god let me tell you in all honesty i doubt i i doubt if i've seen any man that is more passionate about the word of god than me there may be but i've not seen one but i found out that your life is going to be a chronicle of frustrations if you don't understand how truth comes out of the word it says which in other ages was not 
made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets jeremiah 33 please and verse 3 help us media jeremiah chapter 33 please read with me koinonia is projected inside and outside one to go uh-huh stop i will what i will what i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not doesn't matter how long you've been studying it he said you don't know it that's why the results are not speaking but when you call on to me i will answer and the answer is that i will come and i will show you brothers and sisters listen to me we have ignored the holy spirit and carried bibles all around hoping that just by reading it intellectually we'll be able to put a and b together and the bible tells us that the mysteries in this book are sealed that's why they are called mysteries when you read the bible outside of the ministry of the holy spirit all you will see is potentials for possibilities you will keep seeing them but your life will never never experience them one of the greatest secrets in my life is the ability to allow the holy spirit to open up scripture open up scripture open up scripture john chapter 16 please we'll begin our reading from verse 12. john chapter 16 we'll begin our reading from verse 12. read with me please one to read i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now why because you are natural and these things are spiritually discerned are we together verse 13 how be it when he the what the spirit of truth not just the holy ghost the spirit of truth is come what will he do please talk to me he will guide you through the book he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will show you and you seen it all through scripture people are shown things people are shown things if you are not shown anything you will continue bragging around with scripture and never have results your assignment it's not just to sit down and read your bible religiously your assignment is among other things to cry for the manifestation of the spirit of truth all scripture was inspired by him he knows the codes that are enshrined in this book but it is sealed it will take hunger to cry for him but brothers and sisters when he comes and opens it to you you and all others will stand in awe of your destiny this is the mystery behind great men this is the mystery behind great destinies a spirit came to them and showed them things whether it is in the occult or in the faith life nobody rises without being shown things he must show you and i was taken in the spirit ezekiel and i was shown this what have you been shown or what have you been reading you have been reading in the name of jesus i will never be poor you have been reading he owns the cattle on a thousand hills you have been quoting it you have been doing everything but you are just reading potentials it is sealed when the spirit comes he will not quote the scripture he will show you the quote in the scripture when the holy spirit comes he will not tell you no 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 he will show you something that may not make sense for another person there's something god showed me about the anointing there's something god showed me about growth there's something god showed me about victory there's something god showed me on how to deal with enemies whatever is not shown you becomes the gate to your destruction you have to find out what you have not seen and cry with all your heart and say lord show me 
let me tell you how you know you have not shown you whenever you do what is supposed to be the obvious solution and it does not work then it means there is more there is more apostle i pay my tithe apostle i give apostle i'm a sincere man of god i study my bible all doors are closed there is something that has not been shown you let me use the example of our dear pastor did you think that all the people that rose up for him just came to asaba in the last two months were they always there so what happened why was the climate harsh over him look how well-meaning he is i've been to his meeting once an adorable man of god and his wife it's amazing how life does not give the excuse for you being sincere it doesn't say you are sincere and then no sincerity is not the seed for greatness you can be as sincere as possible and find out that you are a victim of everything bad you know pastors come to me and they say apostle i can stand before god and tell you i love god with all my heart i say i'm a man of god if you are lying i will tell you and then they now say apostle but why is life treating me this way like i told you was it last week or the week before last i begin to nod my head in pain because i know that um the solution is not just to pray there is something that they don't know and my brother my sister until this book is open to you and your eyes see your destiny will remain small we are all gathered today now scattered across inside and outside and those following online because god showed a man something your generation is dependent on what you see they are they are waiting earnestly to say man of god what has god shown you that you can bring to the table if all you are taking to destiny is your degree get set for a big shock if all you are taking is just your sincere heart get set for another shock if all you are taking is your uncles that you know my uncle somewhere my auntie somewhere no i don't study the bible to crime scriptures or to preach i search for light i search for truth there are very few people who ever know how i study the bible because if i teach you it will frustrate you i can stay on a scripture for a long time because there is something i'm searching god can show me like a code i can see half of the truth and see the other part two years later and until i see it i will wait but when that code comes back 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 the seals are open and the results follow no devil stops it when when the seal is broken and open then your life will be a wonder even to you favor is here but is sealed there is a mystery to it the anointing there is a mystery the helpers of your destiny are here the problem is not the book the problem is that it is sealed when you are not aware that the book is sealed then you are in trouble because you will continue to read how many churches have continued to read this every sunday sunday after sunday but there is no one to come to testify that this is what god has done please hear me i want you to learn some of you it will take years to understand what i'm sharing with you as simple as it sounds your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your favor is real your power is real i testify when the lord gave me the revelation on the body of christ let me tell you this i didn't read it in any book i remember lying down like a child when the lord came with this scripture for this course the lord began to teach me that there are four encounters the son the spirit the word and the body and that the reason why many people never rise in life is because they've had the three encounters but not the body i said so there is something called an encounter with the body and my life changed every true apostle 
of the Lord must deliver a mystery to a generation. There must be something God gives you by the Spirit. This is not just Bible study. It is that He comes to you. He doesn't come to me every time, but He comes. I remember when God was delivering to me the secret of church growth. I read. I study. I've studied Young Gicho's materials. Studied Bishop Oyedepo's materials. But here He comes the code for your own destiny given to you that someone else will do and will not work for him because it was open for you that's why you see people doing things that should not work but it works hmm. i'm doing my best to try to explain this thing to you sometimes it's very difficult to understand to explain spiritual things All you see is the result that follows. But behind those results are strange encounters that walk together and they make a way. They make a way. Brothers and sisters, look at me. I love you. That's why I'm teaching this. I can come and just talk to you and we laugh and joke. I am so passionate about your results. And the way many of us are going about it, you will never find it that way. I'm telling you this. I'm saving your life from frustration so that you will not jump like others have done for many years and then one day you'll find out they are not even in the faith and they say don't bring any Jesus talk I've tried him it doesn't work you only tried scripture when you try the truth sit back and watch it make a way strange ways in the wilderness ways that should not be there the truth will cut away out of a rock. The truth will cut away out of a river. And you will cross and they will look back and not be able to find a way again. And they'll say, hey, Jimmy, what way did you follow? And you say, I don't know. The truth just made a way. The Egyptians tried to trace the way that the truth made for the Israelites. They couldn't find it. They drowned. The song of Miriam. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and the rider has been thrown. The same way somebody passes is the same way that kills another person because it has to be a way made by the truth for you. Someone can do a business that lifts him and you do a business the one that kills you because it's sealed. It was not open for you. Someone can use the same word you are speaking to get favor. You will use it and get destruction because you are just speaking. Light of the world you step down into darkness open my hands let me see light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see sing it one more time you're the light of the world Step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Listen. When you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you are in a position where you will remain in darkness forever. Jesus himself told us why he sent us the Spirit of Truth. Not just to pray gibberish in tongues. No. The Holy Ghost was sent to us not to make us men of God. The Holy Ghost was sent to us not to make us pastors. The Holy Ghost was sent as the opener of the sealed book to guide you into all truth. The book is there, but it must be opened by the wisdom and the intelligence of one who is not human. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. He made known unto me. First Corinthians chapter 2. Please give it to us. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Read with me, please. Everyone is projected. Just read and then you write it down. One, two, read. Uh huh. Not the spirit of the world. Stop. In any case, you must receive a spirit. So there is the spirit of the world. 
that inspires men and opens codes for men based on the laws of life and they can manipulate it and get some results and god is saying so that when you are inspired you don't think it's the same thing that inspired someone somewhere there are two spirits there is the spirit of the world a man tells you he was just sitting down and he made a discovery it's a lie nobody makes a discovery a spirit comes to you and opens up a portal of a reality and then you quickly scrabble it and walk around it and the whole world marvels and they call you albert einstein and they call you michael faraday and they call you the right brothers the bible is saying there is no such thing as just a human invention by yourself it's not true a spirit must come to you and open up what is sealed but the spirit which is of god why that we may know the things that are freely given to us of god there are things that are freely given so says the book but the spirit of god the spirit of truth comes and opens you so that you will now comprehend and then you walk in the reality the light of it and my brother my sister your life will suddenly change in a way and manner your family members will look at you and say what charm what did you touch look at this come promise if by next week promise suddenly enters a dimension of the anointing a dimension of revelation and let's assume five jeeps come from different people around the world and is parked in front of his house nobody will say promise so you are this hard working someone will call and say promise come where did you go to who did you meet we know that the arm of flesh cannot produce that result who assisted you just tell me and he'll say well it's a long story are you ready to do what i say i'm ready now it's okay meet me by 11 30. let's go to one corner somewhere so everyone knows you would be you would be unwise to see what god is doing through my life and this ministry and believe it's just hard work no no what more do you need to see to convince you no man can do these things except a spirit be with him with god all things are possible without him on your own there are things that are not possible many of us have been fighting alone do listen to what i'm telling you and you will watch your life change in a way that will surprise you i kept thinking about this and i said lord look at what you've done with my life all because i saw the holy ghost and i said holy spirit i am weak i am dull in myself i'm not condemning myself is the truth I am ignorant I may not even have the strength but if for any reason you can hold my hand I am available just that one decision turned my life around I shared with you about my dream and vision you will get it in different messages I can't remember when I preached exactly that I saw a whole generation of people crying and they were saying there was no food no water and I wanted to go and rescue them but I was weak in myself but then I was determined to go out the moment I stepped out there was a giant mighty man he just held my hands and said let's go and if our God is for us then help me stop us and if our God is with us then sing one more time and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then we we'll prophesy to yourself. I teach you 
and watch your enemies criticize you and waste their time there is nothing that can be done about a man who the holy ghost has held his hand nothing is too late once the holy ghost holds your hand and says let's go you will climb mountains and walk through valleys when the door settles you are still standing and you will say to you be all the glory and men will say how are you doing it it's not by charms it's not by brain work this is not a plus b no you see that i treasure the holy spirit so much to a point that many people just say oh this 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 spirit thing is too much just focus on the word you keep doing it that way and see whether your destiny will be open i believe in the word but the word is useless until the spirit breathes upon it he is the one who gives life to the word the first the first person of the godhead revealed was him not the word the word came after he was revealed in the beginning look at the order god created the heavens and the earth we didn't have an opportunity to see how that happened in verse 2 there was darkness then the first of the godhead if he was the first in the creation of earth he must be the first in your life too he's showing you how to come out of chaos many of us just stand religiously acts chapter this john chapter this and we keep jumping around and the holy spirit says no it is sealed that's why an unbeliever will carry the bible and all he will see is a compendium of controversies you will see things that don't add up in scripture god saying this one and god saying another thing and saying uh -uh, god says doesn't lie see how many lies he made because you are reading what is sealed but when the spirit of truth comes he will open your eyes others are looking but you are seeing all of a sudden you will see something others are not seeing and then you will walk in a dimension they are not working in i cry to god i say lord this man is a weak man you have to help me and the lord said he will help me and all of a sudden my life changed i'm introducing to you not just a book you have it I'm introducing to you not just tongues you can pray in tongues I'm introducing to you not just God in you you have him in you I'm introducing to you what young Cho will call Holy Spirit my senior partner if anyone ever tells you what is the secret behind Apostles life if you say prayer you are lying if you say Bible study you are lying if you say worship you are lying if you say sacrifice you are lying all of those are secrets the greatest secret is that a weak man holds a strong God who makes that weak man a strong man that's what God can do that's what God can do the treasure that is in earthen vessel but held by a superior power that no force no cause no witch no devil can stop He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Brothers and sisters, don't you see it? You have been trying in the flesh. You have been doing, oh, I, I think if I, if I buy one golf now and I do this and I understand this and that investment, I will rise. And the Holy Ghost just stands back and watches the ignorance. And you, I, I know, let me just get one golf. I will be getting 10, 10,000 every week. I'm a smart businessman. Then if I get another job in the bank as you are calculating it, I'm not saying those things are useless. But here he stands, the gentle spirit, watching your ignorance and your pride punish you how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind power at work in you change Swallow your pride tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life? It's a little here, a little there. Still no devil is at work in you. Change it. Holy God, you're the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. Hey, you're the Holy. 
that's the secret no matter how dull you think you are no matter what village let them laugh at you while you walk many people laughed at me years ago for holding his hands they laughed and today they bury their head in shame for holding my hand the holy ghost is not a president of a nation the holy ghost is not the ceo of a bank the one who turned chaos in genesis 1 verse 2 to light holds your hand and someone laughs at you what pride when he held my hands i knew nothing about the anointing when he held my hands i knew i had no zero wisdom you were better than me when he held my hands i wasn't as smart as you but i was stupid enough to hold him and say no matter what it is i hold your hands i hold your hands he will hold your hand as you go to the nations people will talk and say let's watch what will become of him and swallow their words after many years because there is a hand there is a grace he is the creative power behind this ministry the wisdom you see is not the wisdom of a man you will read books and read books and read books and be tired and never find it because it is a is sealed are we together sealed all of the things i do today about the anointing he taught me how could i have known how old am i aren't you seeing that what what is happening is more ancient ancient this is not the wisdom of a man Kadosh. Kadosh. you are mighty on the for me to celebrate things like birthdays what what are you celebrating who are you really celebrating take him out of my life and the secret of a foolish man outside of him is revealed but when he stands with you thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph listen I say it again there is nothing you can do with a man that the Holy Ghost has held his hands. No, sir. No, sir. It's a grand formula for victory. When he came upon Jesus, he turned Jesus to Christos, the Christ. Jesus was just a carpenter's son. Just anyone on the street. But when the Holy Ghost came, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, when he comes to your business, he will change it in a way that will surprise you the spirit of truth when it comes to your ministry listen let me tell you this i never listen i never stop getting amazed at the formula people invent in hope that will work out whether for ministry or whatever i teach you principles here 
But principles will never replace presence. Principles only become useful when presence is intact. God is not science. Listen, oh brilliant people. I may not be as smart as you. And I beg your pardon. But if it has to do with victory in this life, someone must hold your hands. And someone must show you. The physical principle of fatherhood should teach us that you never rise alone. Someone must hold your hands and lift you. We have ignored the Holy Spirit because of the embarrassment that follows walking with him. Oh, I tell you, there is big embarrassment walking with him because your way will not be the regular way of people. Because your life will not be within the context of others. But if you can be foolish to still stay and say, Holy Spirit, where will I go to? Jesus said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? You alone have the key. I have watched people mock God I have they have not mocked God by mocking God directly they have mocked God by mocking his wisdom ah. there are people looking for anointing reading books getting all kinds of formula do a plus B add C to it then the power of God will move let me tell you this I say this by the authority of the kingdom you are wasting your time God is not a herbalist. It's only a herbalist you can receive charm from without a relationship. But when it comes to God, He will not show you power first. He will reveal Himself. Moses wanted to see His glory. He said, no, 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 Moses. I am that I am. Let's, let's discuss first. Every promise God made to me, I have watched it come to pass. As at the time He said it, I never knew how it will happen but God when he speaks be foolish enough to believe that Lord you are able God is able to do strings just what he said he will do he's got us for guarantee C in this life the person to make C happen can die but when God holds your hand anything plus anything can become anything doesn't make sense look at this the dear pastor comes and all of a sudden a hand is laid on him it's not a hand that is laid on him it's more than a hand my brother if it's just laying on of hands you go and do it a hand is laid he carries that possibility enters a land that was not favoring him and all of a sudden things start changing i am a blessing to you and to the world today simply because of his ability to help me Ebenezer is my testimony 
I am a man who has been helped by God. Helped in every way by God. Ah, he said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, with the enemies that fool the world, with the enemies of the gospel, where do you stand when God does not hold your hand? The results that we now celebrate glory be to god but they are products of him listen if you think good preaching is what is going to give you influence forever save johnny i wish you the best of luck go and search the bible and search history and find people like alexander the who communicated mysteries that at the end of their lives they were almost committing suicide because even if knowledge abound, they will cease. Knowledge will cease. All of these things will cease. But when you want to become indestructible in this life, hold his hands. And do what he tells you to do. And walk with him. Don't command him. And say, Holy Spirit, my boy, go and bring me money. That's what many of you are doing. Holy Spirit, my boy, go and bring me my wife. Go and bring me my husband. Go and bring me members. Go and bring me prosperity. And he says, when I came to you, was I a tenant or the landlord? The word of God, the Holy Ghost was given to us, among other things, to unseal this. For many years, I read my Bible. Did you know, for many years, there were times that I would not even read my Bible for a while. I would just carry the devotional, repent and read it. Do you know why many of you open the Bible and it wearies you? You are looking at it, but you are reading something that is sealed. That's why you cannot get life from it. You will open today, you don't know what to read. No, not when he's guiding you. Tonight, we are going to pray. We are going to take serious time we are going to pray and embrace afresh his ministry in your life his person in your life he is the secret whether you are a businessman whether you are a husband you are a wife you are a man of God you are a woman of God the starting point of your victory is hinged on your passion and your love for him listen let me tell you this before we begin to pray. Listen to me carefully. When I was writing the things that I now do, that the Holy Spirit was revealing to me, at a point in time, I just sat down and I said, Holy Spirit, you must be joking. Is this it? This foolish? I think I'm smart. The thing with God is, the spirit of God is very gentle the moment you begin to interrupt his wisdom with your I too know mentality he just steps back you do it your way go ahead and do it your way some things in our lives are not just an attack it's us alone without him whether Satan was existing or not is the same trouble you would have that is the natural consequence of ignoring him I love him so much. Koinonia is built on intimacy with the Holy Spirit. He's the one who has given the word of God value. Look at what the messages are doing around the world. Do you think that is just because the message is so powerful? No. If he holds your hand, he holds your finances. He holds whatever comes from you. Someone called me the other day and said they were inside a taxi, a cab and the cabman every time he picks you he, he, his own gift to you is that he will play one koinonia message i don't know the cabman and he just continued like that there are people who have met angels who gave them koinonia messages not human beings they entered meetings and gave them messages i i was i true to, to god i don't share all these testimonies i was told of someone who bought a memory card new memory card new brand new memory card slotted it in his phone and all he saw was koinonia message new memory card with seal seal he opened it i'm not lying to you a pastor from gambia 
a great a great man of god from gambia we spoke yesterday he said he was so depressed and he got to a point where he was washing plates in his house and he didn't know what to do and all of a sudden he said he, he just went on youtube and how he got across one teaching and as soon as he got that one teaching his life changed he said by next sunday the church changed and exploded he saw the manifestations of the spirit the word seeds were coming and he said who is this he introduced it to his wife the wife listened to the same message he did the wife didn't know the message he had listened to but she went to search on her own and listened to the same message you had the pastor that came last week from abuja just arriving here someone calls him to buy 300 shares it's not the work of a man no sir our parents are struggling now and suffering because they have embraced every other thing except him our our world is dying because we have ignored him don't join them don't join them to ignore him already your past the family background you came from is already a disadvantage on his own the only advantage in your life is him when you find him he will forget about your enemies forget about critics i'm telling you don't waste your time just leave all those things stay with him let him hold your hand my brother my sister and watch what he will do with your church and watch what he will do with your business and watch what he will do you may be crying while you are holding him i guarantee you the cry of pain will soon become the cry of joy you just hold his hands worship team hold his hands as you sing don't carry skill and a nice voice alone we live in a wicked world if all you carry is a nice voice you will not last one year human beings will suck you like an orange and throw you and look for the next happening thing but you remain fresh when you hold him impossible to be ignored impossible to be ignored he's gonna fulfill every My God is able. He truly is able. Listen. Look at me. In Nigeria today, an average young man cannot get established without some kind of bribe or some kind of thing. To have to corner and lie and do something. You want to walk in integrity and righteousness. The environment is already hostile against you. The fact that you name the name of Christ alone is trouble for you. They will hate you at your workplace, hate you everywhere. What then is your advantage? Your advantage is not just the miracles that he brings. The advantage is him. If you can hold his hands and say, Holy Spirit, I am weak. I confess my ignorance. I don't know so much. I know that if I try to be established my way, the church will never grow. The influence will never grow. But I submit to you. You are the fountain of wisdom. You are the spirit of truth. Open up to me. And then the Holy Ghost will say, all right, you step back. And then he will show you A, B, C and your life changes you will stand as shocked as those looking at you and just nod your head and say god what are you doing i hardly share my testimonies i had to minimize it because of wisdom and so that it can encourage people to rise there are things brothers and sisters if i tell you some of you will not sleep i myself the recipient of that testimony sometimes i wake up in the night and just sit on my bed and say lord what is this what is this Halakbara, you are the mighty god hey,
glorious God. What's that song? That song had been in my spirit for throughout last week. I don't know how to sing. You are going to sing that song. After it, we are going to take our time and pray. Help us, please. Jesus asking for anything we are going to take our time and pray in the spirit one of the mysteries that we were given to accessing the mind of God is praying in the spirit I like you to take out time and just blast in tongues and pray seriously in the spirit lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere inside outside those online follow us as we pray in Pacaso to Pregadia, Limon de Pasapa Paragada, Rico to Pregate Ligadaba, Sete Pregate Seke Paragada, Sipata Parate di Paragadosa, Ipanto Pregatesa, Lecatalabada Bagabate, In Proto Sipalate, Repata, In Pregate Nebata Paragadesa, Sabana Bagabana Bagabana Bagaba, Retete, Ipata. Ima 
Toriataya, Erotata, Iparate, Rikete, 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 and foolishness I come in with my limitations and I come to you you are the only one who can make meaning out of my life I come to you lift your voice and pray and cry cry ah. for his presence in your life get tired of things not working in your life and cry for his wisdom cry for his wisdom Cry for his wisdom. Cry for his wisdom. Cry Lord, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. I'm tired of making decisions. I'm tired of making decisions. I ask for your wisdom. Come, come Lord Jesus. Come, Spirit of Truth. Come, Spirit of Truth. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Then the secret was revealed. Daniel did not find it. Then the secret was revealed. Then the secret was revealed. I don't know what area in your life you need to see the hand of God desperately. I'd like you to open your mouth and say, Lord, show me. There has to be a secret. Open up this scripture. Hey! Open up this scripture. Shalom Akosia. Bereke heaven. You are the custodian of the wisdom of God. You are the custodian of truth. Show me. Show me. Show me. Bereke Teliga Makosia. Show me the secret to the anointing. Show me to the secret to increase. The secret to ever increasing fire. The secret to spiritual power. The secret to influence. The secret to activating my destiny. Show me, O The book is sealed. Open my eyes. The book is sealed. Yeah. Open my eyes. The book is sealed. Open my eyes. The book is sealed. Open my eyes. The book is sealed. Open my eyes. What must I do to prosper? 
What must I do to rise? What is the key in the spirit? What is the key in the spirit? Listen, look up. When Jesus, watch this. When Jesus was transfigured, he showed us the secret to his transfiguration by the appearance of two men. The law and the prophet. Not just the law of Old Testament. That if you want to be transfigured, the principles of the kingdom and the ministry of the prophetic standing side by side like Moses and the prophet becomes your key to rising. When Jesus was transfigured, we saw two men. Elijah did not appear. Enoch did not appear because they were not responsible. They were not the spiritual mysteries. The Bible says that Moses Moses stood on one side and Elijah, I meant to say, sorry. Ezekiel and other prophets did not appear. Elijah was standing representing the prophetic. Moses was representing the law. And he said, the book that contains those laws, don't let it depart. He's showing you how to succeed. Jesus did not just rise like that. The law, not just the law of the Old Testament, the precepts of God. You can have all the principles, but there is no prophetic voice and you remain there. No glory. You can do something that should prosper because there is obedience to principles, but there is no voice. It's like ingredients. If you have rice, you don't need as much tomato as you need rice. But don't put the tomato and see. You can't say you have jollof rice because of that small tomato, including salt. Sometimes you, you need one mutu of rice and then a few spoons of salt. But you refuse to put that salt and see how it will mess up the whole food. Something you may be missing because your eyes have not been opened. You've done everything but the last key to just strike it and open it. That's what I keep doing all the time. That's what I keep doing all the time. When I speak over your life, I'm not repeating myself. When I speak over your life, I'm standing to fulfill all righteousness in the spirit by the wisdom of the spirit. I've taught you that Jesus walked under a closed heaven for 30 years as the word of God until a prophet came to his life and spoke and baptized him immersed him and his heavens were open if jesus operated an open heavens for 30 years till he met john the baptist in the spirit and power of elijah your destiny will close almost forever until there is a voice listen listen i want you to get to a point in your life where you no longer fight spiritual realities the earlier you learn this the better for you do it before you start having children do it before it gets too bad because darkness for sure is covering the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the glory of God will continue to arise it's not just because you are a man of God we trade secrets in this kingdom to stand and one of it is the Holy Spirit holding you but not just holding you opening to you the mysteries of the kingdom continue to read your Bible but don't think you will find it just by reading you will get to a point where he will give you the eyes to see they are life to those who find them that means he's missing no until he opens it to you I found certain things in my life it was Bishop Oyedepo that shared with us that he found the key to kingdom prosperity and he spin round and shouted yeah I can never be poor I'm sure people laughed at him but you found it
if you found it you found it I want you to succeed I want you to excel I'm showing you the precepts of the kingdom listen take luck out of it don't call what you don't understand luck that's arrogance there is a very serious dynamic working that you are not aware does not mean nothing is being engaged you will see what will begin to happen to your life shortly when men say why is it happening like this don't lie that you don't know what you did yes it is it is the lord's doing that's why it is marvelous a man's doing cannot be marvelous in your eyes a man's doing is natural that's why i don't clap for you for walking because it's a man's doing men walk naturally born again or not but there are results that when we see we know that this one is the finger of god rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do this except god be with him it's a message i want you to carry to everyone you love jesus said come on to me are you seeing now come on does not wisdom cry come on to me why will you continue to suffer and struggle listen i'm bringing us to a point where we fulfill proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7 trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not he's giving you a word of caution oh wise man lean not on your own understanding he says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path he said be not wise in your own understanding verse 7 he said fear the lord and turn away from evil it is because we are wise in our own understanding if god does not lead me i don't have where to go i don't trust what i can do i will mislead people with my ignorance but when he comes you can dare the unbearable you can stand and look at goliath and say goliath you come against me with your bows and your spheres but i come against you in the name of the lord god the captain of the host of heaven whom you have defied and goliath you don't mind him while he's talking am i a dog that you are coming with a sling say just keep watching is the same way god can give you an instruction by the holy ghost you've been dancing all the time but the holy ghost will wake you by two and say just dance to 2 30. it's not the ordinary dance you just finished dancing that dance will give you twins that dance will give you an estate and if people ask you how did you get it you say i dance they say please don't turn us into idiots how did you get it i know you did all those church things i said well, should i lie i'm telling you how i did it the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom i want to release my faith with you in one minute i want you to be sensitive to from today till sunday but i want you to ask the lord for three major things that you want to see done in your life things that don't ask for small things carnal things ask for something that is destiny shifting ask for something that that is able you know elisha had no business Gehazi had no business ha having his eyes open but when he was close to elisha the prophet he said i'm not seeing what you are seeing and he said okay let me make your eyes see he didn't say just mm -hmm. take advantage of my spiritual climate and see what i'm seeing a man came in the midst of samuel where a prophet was and all of a sudden the hand of god was upon him he prophesied naked from morning till night not because he had been praying and fasting people have prophetic implications everybody walks with the spiritual climate that they carry i want you to be humble enough to pray and ask god some of you is your family you are crying for an intervention that must step in i'm going to give you the next let's use the next five minutes i truly am going to be interceding for you i'm not praying for myself i just want you to pray and agree lift your voice and pray don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time
Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Listen. You are going to pray, but many of you, I, I'm, you're not, you're not, it's not the zest of prayer. Let me tell you something. They met the disciples of Jesus and said, why don't these guys fast? We are fasting and these guys are eating. Yet they are getting the results we are not getting. And Jesus said, for as long as the bridegroom is there. So there is something the presence of the bridegroom can do. There is an advantage you can take. The bridegroom is the one who the marriage feast is for. Are we together now? The covenant of the marriage is with the bridegroom. But because you are supporting through a covenant of alignment, he's saying there are some things that you may not need to do when the bridegroom is not there. In other words, I'm not ignoring that principle. It is what you should have done except for the fact that another presence was introduced that can immune you from it. I needed to share that scripture just to help you there are some things that ordinarily that's the way you are supposed to do but god brings men to your life that you can take advantage of and expedite your journey ordinarily the disciples were to fast jesus said i'm not fighting fasting they will fast one day but for now as long as i am here uh -uh. there are people that when you are around i know people that just because you are around them you may never read any book on finances. I'm telling you sincerely. Except you just want to add to your knowledge. The least, the, their, their greediest state is still higher than your greatest dream. Their presence. If you meet Prince Charles and Prince Harry and say, I just got you a book on five levels of wealth. He will congratulate you for being that courageous to enter the Buckingham Palace and say, walk out of this place. Do you know why? Because as long as they are in the palace, if they are out of the palace, they will do a lot of reading. But as long as they are in the palace, I teach you mysteries. Always find out what advantage you have based on who you are connected to. Not just God alone. There are some things you are doing that if you have knowledge, you should not be doing. You should have, others may be doing it. If I'm a pastor in living faith today, I, there are some things I should not do. If I'm a pastor in MFM today and I have problem with my prayer life, I think something is wrong. There is a grace I should drink from freely. If I'm not a pastor in that place, I may need to dissipate some energy. But when God calls men, he calls men with certain possibilities. And when you come within that covering, that thing should work for you. I keep drumming this thing, but many people don't get it. It's true. It's true. Find out those who are genuinely connected to this anointing. There are things they, before they even learned the principle, the result was already speaking. It's true. As long as the bridegroom is there, you are immune. When the bridegroom leaves, so you can learn the principle so that you are not just dependent helplessly on the bridegroom. But you can take advantage of the presence of the bridegroom. You can carry a handkerchief from Benihin and put it in your pocket and enter a meeting and be surprised yourself at what is happening. Simply because you made contact. Do you not see that God will be wicked to allow you to pray for everything? No. I don't pray for everything in my life there are things that you can get jacob and esau those two guys they were not praying for the blessing they were connected to a lineage that had it the father didn't say okay you guys he said just go and make me venison let me release something on you look at this esau did not receive the blessing yet see the prosperity that came the fact that he came out physically that's why ishmael today will the residue of that prophecy must always follow him there are things that should happen in your life my brother my sister there are some things that god has done for you already walking 
trying to save yourself from sin by your strength is unnecessary it was done by those who the bridegroom did not come for so they use the blood of bulls but now christ has come and that sacrifice that you just receive that's the same way there are other things that has been done he gave gifts to men to ease their journey there are things in life are you ready to pray our time is gone i want you to open your mouth and pray pray unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come the bible says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet he shall receive a prophet's reward he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man he shall receive a righteous man's reward Pray. Shapakoto sopra da kashubi ada baladaba. The Bible says, "May the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Send thee help from Zion." Abalado sada bakato she ada balakotiya. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. For this cause, many are weak. For this cause, many are sick. For this cause, many do sleep. Pray believing. Pray believing. Who are down mountain before Zerubbabel? Who are down mountain before this man of God? Who are down mountain before this woman of God? Who are down mountain before this family? Who are down mountain before this business? Who are down mountain? Hallelujah. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But he said, but I have prayed for you. If he could pray for himself on that issue, Jesus would not need to pray. God doesn't need to do for you what you can do for yourself. Are we together? He said, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you. What was the content of the prayer? That thy faith fail not. He said, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. How do you strengthen them? By teaching them that there are some things you cannot do for yourself. 
and when you find what you cannot do for yourself find the grace that can make it happen for you peter i see you in a situation now i see that your capacity cannot go far enough to give you that miracle so i came in for you in this similitude advocate this mystery when you see people trying things and it's not working tell them stop 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 in this kingdom is all right to be helped find a grace peter satan desire to sift you like wheat and as far as your level is concerned satan would have he already had a headway but i came in Kabbalah, and prayed for you that your faith fail not he said when you are strengthened brothers and sisters let me tell you one of the most uncomfortable thing for believers to learn especially because of the teachings that we've had um of course the bible says you can do all things i believe the bible says that because of the provisions that god has put in the kingdom are we together now yes when i say i will serve you jollof rice it's not just because i can cook it's because there is a way of getting it available the most important thing is that you have it so when the bible says all things are possible it's because of the possibilities he invested within the kingdom are we together one of it one of the mysteries that make all things possible is the ability to tap from higher graces you are getting there one day but if god is to allow you get there before you get the result satan will eat you up before you get there are we together so jesus as a baby could not pray for himself so god put a grace in hannah the prophetess to continue interceding until he would grow in wisdom as a baby he was killable so god had to put men to agree when he became strong he started standing for others when the disciples were weak in themselves jesus stood for them when they became strong they stood for others too that's how it works in the kingdom believe all the possibilities of the bible but be sincere enough to know what possibilities are available at your level of grace and then you are able to find the grace and the anointing that can supplement otherwise you will stand in pride believing all things are possible and it may not work for you father in the name of jesus i pray for your people As inspired by you I have I've asked them to pray Lord you hear me when I call in the name that is above all names surprise them in the name that is above all names I declare from today till Monday that God has made my birthday in the name that is above all names help them please I'm declaring that all those who are connected to this ministry, all those who are connected to this vision and connected to this anointing, enter a level of strange wonders. Strange wonders. Strange wonders. Listen. Hallelujah. You see, I'm sharing with you many mysteries tonight. Hold on. I'm praying for you days are times when unusual requests are granted read your bible there were certain requests that only happen at birthdays when a king was celebrating his birthday a girl danced before him ordinarily the king would not remove the head of a prophet but on a birthday season something happened when jesus was about to be born star that would not shine that much unusually came to the sky because a child was about to be born listen this kingdom is governed by mysteries bad days are not just the days when men are born bad days are signified by things in the spirit those who study scientology know those who study all of these things know except that man is not relevant to the program of god the same way covenants are enacted 25th december let everybody die in this family by 24th 
someone starts getting sick because 25th is coming are you seeing and 25th a father dies next year 20th the spirit that is responsible for activating that covenant comes around again and someone starts falling sick so it is bad days are not just a celebration of the day a man was born a whole prophet had his head removed by a small girl could the king have granted her that request ordinarily what would she be doing in the presence of a king but because it was the king's birthday if you understand what i'm teaching you i'm saying this so that those hearing especially online will not say is this man idolizing this you know sometimes i'm even a bit scared to share some of these things because I, I, I want to make sure that I am understood so that people don't stay and making you maybe worship a man or something. No, I fear God, but this is how this kingdom works. So I pray again that between now and Monday the 25th, in the name that is above all names, by the power that raised Christ from the dead and by the power that backs up this ministry, the grace that has helped me in the name of Jesus may my God bring strange signs and wonders to your life strange signs and wonders in your finances strange signs and wonders in your life I speak to you that the things that were difficult for you before in a way that will surprise you you will enter a dimension of ease in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that this prophetic word be signified by the angels of the Lord and let there be a strange performance testimonies after testimonies hallelujah you watch the testimonies that will be shared on Monday service here and it will look as if it's a charm someone will tell you I believe this prayer and I went, look what God has done in my life. Look how God has changed me. Look how God has opened doors. I even pray for your loved ones that are not here. In the name of Jesus, we connect them to this possibility. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Wave your hands and give Jesus thanks. We have to close for the night. Hallelujah. While standing everyone, what a joy. To be able to win a soul to jesus within this period there's someone in here overflow one two three who needs jesus desperately and someone online you are celebrating a man who gave his life to jesus christ what a privilege i don't know what my life would have become if i didn't hand over my life to jesus i would have been dead i'm sure long dead forgotten but i gave my life to him and he gave me his own life I want to pray for you give me the opportunity to lead you to Jesus you are in this place tonight and you have never made a genuine decision for Jesus or peradventure you've given your life to Christ but at one point or the other things just went haywire in your life and you are saying apostle I need to reconnect especially in this season we have two minutes for you aside from overflow three that I would request that you walk to your projector stand overflow one and two and the main auditorium here Please appreciate them as they make their way to the front. Someone has to be coming tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Appreciate them, please, quickly. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Are you clapping for them, Koinonia? If you are coming from outside, please make it snappy. God bless you. Young and old, you are welcome. Come. Come to Jesus. One minute. I'm counting to four. One. Two. If you are coming from outside, please run. Mama, God bless you. Three. You must be born again. Let him give you a new beginning and change your life. Hallelujah. God bless you. If you are joining them, please join them very quickly. I want to pray for them now. You are online about to make this great decision. Join them also. As I pray this prayer, I want you to join them with all your heart. Those of you in front here, please lift your hand and say after me, very sincerely from your heart, say, Lord Jesus, 
say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god tonight i declare that jesus is lord of my life i receive your life and i declare that from tonight and forever i go forward ever and backward never i'm a child of god i'm saved in the name of jesus help that madam lord jesus thank you for this glorious decision that they have made i present to you the ones you died for and i pray that the grace that saves the grace that keep and the grace that lift let these graces be at work in your life in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven and i declare by the authority of scripture that you are a new creation the old is past and everything has become new may the lord bless you may the lord honor you cause you to love him and to continually walk in his ways in jesus name i pray amen and amen please follow the gentleman waving his hands everyone and um, there'll be a few people to receive you